This video is going to show you how to diagnose and repair an electric lawnmower. Mine is a tax task force. Um, most electric lawnmowers are the same setup. So what you're going to do, actually I should say the problem with this one, I, I got it for free on Craigslist and um, I plugged it in and it tripped the breaker. Now there's not too many parts on these things so let me show you what you need to do if yours has tripped the breaker that means that there's a short circuit inside now you want to get this lid off there's generally four screws or so uh, if you have this exact same one there's you know here here and two in the front so you unscrew those mine were actually uh, stripped so I had to use my electric sawzall to cut them off and I'll have to get creative on how to bolt that back down but what you have inside here is pretty simple. It's the electric DC motor, and you have this thing right here, which is not tied down too tightly. Is um, This is the bridge rectifier. This converts uh, alternating current AC that's in the wall to direct current, which feeds the motor. Um, <clears throat> now, my suspicion is that this is the thing that's wrong, that's broken. Uh, there's a set of four diodes in here that convert the automatic or the uh, alternating current to direct current and uh, that they can fail. And you can see on here that it's like bone dry under this thing. Uh, this is, uh, it should have some kind of uh, paste or material uh, because this generates heat and you want that heat to dissipate. So this is a heat sink. And there's nothing there. So when we repair this, um, if this is the problem, we're going to put some thermal paste back on there. Uh, but what what I'm going to do, since this is my guess as to what the problem is, this this screw is actually off when I first opened this, but I'll put that back on. Um, <clears throat> what you're going to want to do is get a, a multimeter if you want to try this, and see if the lead to the black wire and the white wire is shorted. Uh, and if it is, then you know the problem is, is inside of here. So let me show you uh, how to do that next. So if you have a multimeter um, and you know how to use it, you're gonna go to, to the continuity setting. But on here, if you have the same one as mine, it's this diode setting right here, it might be under ohms. And on mine, I have to push this button to make it beep if there's a... Uh, um, for continuity so I can just listen for the beep. So I have it on beep setting and here's what this means. It'll just test to see if there's a short circuit. It'll beep. So here's my probe leads and listen for the beep. Hear that beep? So I'm just going to test these two positions here and if it beeps then it should not beep but if it does then that's the culprit. See? It's beeping. The positive and negatives should not be connected to one another. And so that's the short circuit. A diode inside of this thing has burned out. And uh, then when I plug it into the wall, it trips the, the breaker because of the short circuit. So my, my guess here was correct. And I actually ordered another one of these. And so I'll show you how to replace it um, in a minute. The one, one thing that you might want to do is just take a picture of this. So you remember what order the wires go in. Um, <clears throat> and then when you get your new one, if that is the problem, you could be able to put it back on, get the thermal paste on here, screw it back down, and you should be back in business. So here is my new bridge rectifier. I bought this on Amazon.com. I'll put the link in the description. But what I searched on was this KBPC2504. This is a a uh, 400 watt 25 amp bridge rectifier and you can see that this pin is a different orientation than the other ones so all we need to do is see the printing is on there if you took a picture of it you just do the same thing you just pull this off and plug it in on this one and this blue and the white wire goes on the opposite corner, right here. And the, was it the black wire went here? And 
the white wire goes here. There you go. Okay, so now I have this all wired back up. You saw that was pretty, pretty straightforward. Now, um, you know, it's not critical that you put thermal paste down or thermal grease, uh, but you really don't want to do this again, even though it was a cheap part. Might as well do it right the first time. So uh, I'm actually going to put this cheap stuff that I had that I bought from DigiKey a while ago. But if, if you've never bought this before or you don't know what to get, this stuff is called Arctic Silver 5 uh, Thermal Compound. You can buy this on Amazon. It's probably one of the highest rated thermal compounds. People use it for heat sinks on processors. Um, if you could see that Arctic Silver. So you could use this. But I have this stuff already opened up. Uh, I don't even remember what the stuff was called, but here's what I'll do with this. I'll just put a good layer of this stuff. Oh, wait a minute. I got to take off the tape. I get a good layer of this right on here. You want to clean it off if yours is all, if this part is all dirty, but mine's all clean there. Um, get a good layer of this grease on there. So you want it just a little bit, get it on there, and maybe get, I guess have a piece of paper here, something rigid, just to make a thin layer. You don't want a uh, globs and globs, but you want a nice thin layer of, of that compound there. And we're just going to get this back on there. There's my screw. There it is. And screw this back down. There we go. Nice and tight. Everything looks good. Now we get to try it. Okay, here's the moment of truth. We're going to try it out. Here we go. Three, two, one. Success. I hope you can fix yours too. Have a great day. Like the video and subscribe if you'd like to learn how to fix other things and save money.